So, Adi, good morning. Uh, today we're going to talk about point of care ultrasound. Point uh, of care ultrasound, okay, that's pretty yes, good. Yes, or POCUS for short. Um, but first I just do want to um, describe a little bit of my disappointment that we did a, a proof of concept study in South Sudan with six clinical officers who are mid-level providers who are our main clinicians. And one of them was actually supposed to come here and do the presentation. And his name? Justin. Uh, Big shout out to Justin. I don't know where you are, but if you're watching the live stream, we love you and we miss you. Yeah, and sorry, his visa got rejected, so he wasn't able to be here. So I'm going to be describe a little bit about what is point of care ultrasound and what we're trying to do here. So POCUS, or point of care ultrasound, really is the ability to use very portable ultrasounds at the patient's bedside by non-radiologists. Um, and so what they do is you use ultrasounds at, in a simple pattern recognition with a simple algorithm, and you, you answer binary yes or no questions in order to aid your clinical decision making. Okay, that's clear. And so there's about three innovations that have happened over the last 10 years that have made it really easy to use in our fields. One is the price has come down a lot. What used to be tens of thousands of euros has now uh, made machines less than 20,000 euros and probably in the next couple of years even less than 10,000 euros. The second is the size. So what used to be these large machines that you can imagine um, have turned into something that fits in a MSF standard issue logistician's um, cargo pants. In your back pocket type of thing. Oh, look, look, literally in your cargo in, pants. In my cargo pants is the ultrasound. Fantastic. This is it. Um, it works with any tablet or basically there are about six different tablets that work and you have a probe. And this probe right now is about $300 a month, or about $8,000 to buy. You simply plug the probe into... Uh, oops, the tablet. It turns on by itself. Maddie, do you want to come around and you can have a quick look at what's going on here? And you have an ultrasound. And what we do is, um, this is Eddie, who's an excellent emergency physician from Canada, who's our demo. Let's pretend you're ill, Eddie. <laughs> we did this- uh, Having a baby. We did this proof of concept with children less than five years old in South Sudan. Um, <laughs> we don't have a child here, but- You've chosen the biggest man in the building <laughs> to demonstrate on. Um, and we'll show, but basically what a clinical officer or any clinician can do in the field is just take this ultrasound um, at the bedside, kind of wipe it uh, in different patterns on the left side, uh, on the patient's uh, right side, on the patient's left side, on the patient's side, um, and then on the patient's back. And with that, when following a simple uh, algorithm, you can, um, you can go ahead and sit back, Eddie. You can almost tell whether the patient has uh, fluid outside the lung, such as what's called pleural effusion, which may be things like tuberculosis. You can think about uh, pneumonias, whether they have fluid inside the lung caused by sepsis or by heart failure. And you can get a lot of information right at the bedside. And the reason this works is because it's a simple pattern. Mm. You're looking for binary questions. Is the pattern vertical? Is the pattern horizontal? Mm. Um, and we're able to teach this to non-radiologists. And what that means is that not only can we teach multiple doctors, mm. but we can task shift this mm. and allow a lot of our mid-level providers, midwives, our uh, uh, other national staff to be able to answer pretty impressive clinical questions. Um, there are all, for the, for, the, for the next steps for MSF, there are already a lot of algorithms that we should be implementing right now mm -hmm. for trauma, to be able to tell if somebody has uh, excess blood in their abdomen or on their heart. Um, for obstetrics and pregnancy, of course, we need to be able to teach our staff. Mm -hmm. But also there are new algorithms and protocols that we need to research for our patients. Yeah. A lot of the algorithms have already been done in the developed world where there's lots of specializations. And, our fields, we know that there's diseases like malaria and tuberculosis and HIV and malnutrition that are not at all the same. And we need to come up with new protocols to be able to help uh, these patients. Okay, that's fantastic. How far are you in the development of this? It's been field tested, you say, already? And uh... Absolutely. Um, over the last year, I've used it myself. I spent nine months in South Sudan and I use it almost every day. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, we did a, a research study as a proof of concept 
can we teach clinical officers, which are these mid-level providers? They each did 60 exams each, and those 60 exams were sent to two expert reviewers. Mm -hmm. We finished in March, and the expert reviewers are still finishing. Um, reading all uh, all the exams. One of them is already finished and the concordance rate between him and the clinical officers is approaching 90%. Okay. So they did great. Fantastic. Well, that's really good news. Uh, we've got time for one more question, Dr. Bhargavi. Adi, I have to say, as a clinician, I've always thought of ultrasound as a complete black art. So this sounds incredible that if it's actually able to make it easy just for non-radiologists like myself, but also nursing staff to, to use this. I don't know if you know, but through the lab working group in MSF, we're trying to recommend that we have ultrasound available at all primary care facilities, ideally. Um, but can you tell me, like, if you are using this with non-clinicians, is it a kind of rule out or a rule in type of diagnostic tool? Yes, yeah, so for all the non-radiologists, it's a, it's, a um, it's a rule in. So this test is, in epidemiological terms, very specific um, and a little less sensitive. So for example, we can use this for appendicitis. And if I do a, an ultrasound on Eddie and I see an appendicitis, absolutely. This, uh, Eddie has appendicitis, um, sorry Eddie, and he needs, <laughs> he needs to get seen by a surgeon immediately. But if I don't see it, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have it. And I still need to incorporate this into uh, my clinical decision making. Does he have fever? Does he have abdominal pain? Is he vomiting? Um, has he had any other surgeries? And this is one of the things that we, it, why we call it point of care ultrasound, is it's integrated into the clinical decision making um, by all the clinicians. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Bravo. And good luck, Eddie, getting better.